Welcome to this new video in which I'll show you how to pass XML to analyze both an RSS feed and a sitemap in order to check all the URLs contained in it. For example, here I have an RSS feed, feed and next to it I have a sitemap. The structure is a little different. If you look at the, the source code, you'll see that in a sitemap we have a, a structure that Basically, for each URL, which is made up of a set of URL elements with log, last mode, images, and so on, and in an RSS feed, it's different. You actually have not URLs, but items, title, link, etc. So, these are different structures. But you'll see, the Automa template I've created automatically detects whether you're in an RSS feed or a sitemap. So, demonstration. Let's take the RSS feed. I'll enter it here. I've already entered it. Perfect. And there it goes. I launch it. Everything happens. Transparent, because here we're interacting with an HTTP request block that allows requests to be executed in the background. So it doesn't interfere with your browsing in any way. And it was so fast and invisible that we didn't even notice it. But here, it ran fine. I recorded each URL in a table. So you see, all the URLs were listed in a table. So it worked fine. It retrieved all the URLs from the RSS feed. We're going to do the same thing now with the, the sitemap. So the structure is different. It's not a problem. Here we go. Now it's running. Done. And what do we have in the table? We also have all the URLs that were retrieved. There are many, many, many URLs. So it worked perfectly in just a few seconds and invisibly. This way, you can pass XML files, be they RSS feeds, feeds or sitemaps, how it works. Here, as you can see, we start with an HTTP request block, as I was saying, execute, scrape invisibly, to execute requests invisibly. So basically, I tell it to read in this way, invisible, this URL, he gets me the answer, I assign it to a variable. So this is what we see in the logs at Thomas. When you go to the variables, you'll see the variable called feed, in fact, it's the whole page, all the source code of the page that was recorded. From here, I analyze whether it's an RSS feed or a sitemap. How do I make this distinction? It's very simple. Is it an RSS feed? That means, do I have a tag in it somewhere, at least an item tag? A sitemap? Do I have at least one local tag? Since these are tags that are not found, in the other type of XML file. So quite simply, this is how I automatically detect. Automatically, if you're using an RSS feed, feed or a sitemap. So if it's an RSS feed, I apply a specific treatment to the RSS feed to retrieve the data in JavaScript. Thanks ChatGPT, because I don't know anything about JavaScript. And it was ChatGPT who gave me the script to use. And with a slightly different version, to take into account the difference in markup, I pass, analyze, and extract the data from either the sitemap or RSS file. Once these blocks have been executed, we end up with what I showed you earlier, a feed tab variable. It's the JavaScript that creates this. And from there, as it's an array structure, it allows me to create a loop in a very simple way based on the array. So I use a loop data block block based on a variable, the variable called feed tab, quite simply. This loop, I give it a name. And from there, beginning of the loop, end of the loop, loop, I apply all the treatments that I want on these URLs. I haven't given a specific example here, but from here you can imagine using a sitemap or RSS feed, process each URL, and do whatever you want with it.
all I've done is simply add the URL to the table. Each URL from feed tab, I added to my table at Thomas, which I had previously created here. That's what gives me my little table at the end with all that. And so, once again, within the loop, you can imagine anything and everything. The idea is that thanks to this template, you can retrieve all the URLs and do whatever you want with them. In one way, as you've seen, I think, relatively simple. What do we have? We don't even have 10 blocks to deal with all these conditions. You'll find this template in my Thomas training course so you can analyze and test it for yourself. You may not have understood everything, but that's normal. This was not a training video, but a demonstration because the aim of my training course is precisely to to gradually teach you how to master Thomas so that you can feel at ease on all templates. Did you like this video? Please feel free to like, comment, and share it. That's what keeps me going. And if you have any ideas for templates for future videos, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you don't want to miss any future videos, subscribe to my channel.